Hey everybody, it's me Russ up underneath another automobile with some oil change tips. That's right YouTube, it's time for my top 10 oil change tips. Number one, a tip on keeping the inside of your engine clean, because that's important. When you're putting oil in your engine, uh, try and keep dirt out of your funnel, all right? I was a hone operator back in the day for a large aircraft company that's not too far from here. I live in Everett, Washington, where the Boeing plant is, and I worked for a contractor and I, I ran a hone. Um, also got curious about honing in the automotive world and people that hone out cylinders and engine blocks. And one guy was telling me that all of the things that he's seen, you know, that tend to scratch up the inside of an engine. And he did this, like he says, I never ever let my, my uh, funnel, right? Anything that's coming in contact with the engine, right? You just leave this out and it gets dirt and pieces of sand and grit, you know, leaving it out in your garage, uh, all of that stuff. Sure, the oil filter is going to filter it out, but it can get up inside your engine and it can cause, like, like he was telling me, like lines that just, is it coming, it can't be coming through the intake, you know? But he concluded that a lot of it, odds are, is coming in through going to shops and people using dirty funnels to pour fresh oil in the engine. That's that's how he concluded that these big gouges were being drug across the inside of the, the engine block cylinder wall. And that's, you know, say people may be saying that's a little bit going too far to the extreme, but it's always something that stuck with me. And if I couldn't, you know, if I didn't keep this thing clean or you know, put it in a plastic bag or something. What uh, what I would do is I'd use plastic water bottles. These plastic water bottles are everywhere. Get one out of your recycling, you know, space and just get a razor knife, cut the top off it, dry out the inside with a paper towel or something and, and use it as a funnel. See that? Look how clean that is. That is awesome right there. That's keeping, I keep it in a plastic bag, man. Don't want no, don't want no grit in my engine. And uh, so yeah, take it from a hone operator who hones the inside of engine cylinders. Keep your funnel clean, man. Number two, take your time when draining your oil pan. Slow your roll, man. See the oil dripping out of there like molasses? Just dripping ever so slowly. And this is also one of the good things about changing your own oil. Oil, you know, it, the viscosity gets to the way it gets and it takes some time to drip all out of there. And the more that drips out, the cleaner your engine. So don't be in a rush when it comes to emptying fluids out of the pan. I took the bleeder screw off and I've been waiting and uh, doing some work on the other van, the other caravan over there, and just letting it drip. Um, again, if you're not going to some Jiffy Lube or someplace like that, you can really drain your oil pan, which is good, and that can take some time. Bleeder screw O-ring inspection so i just cracked this so there's a little oil right here but one good thing while you're under here is to look for leaks and this was pretty dang dry so if you start seeing leaks that's a that means that you may need to change the little gasket around here if you have one some vehicles don't sometimes you can put an o-ring on there if you get a little leakage Sometimes your pan gets beat up and it causes the threads to not seal everything properly. So sometimes it's a good idea to put an O-ring in there or if your vehicle has one with an O-ring in it, you just kind of inspect your pan, make sure there's no oil leaking. If there is no oil leaking, 
odds are you're fine. But it's a good idea to change that little O-ring inside here every so often. Again, if you have a vehicle that has one. And to get your oil to drain faster, remove that. All right, just another little tip for you. That keeps the air flowing through, oil flowing through. It's a good thing. This has a seal right here too. See the rubber seal in there? That probably may need to be replaced every so often. Uh, you can find an O-ring that size, I suppose, and just slip it in there. You could ask the dealership. They'll charge you whatever they'll charge you. O-ring would probably just be just as well, fit right in there. While you're in there, number four is air filter inspection. Uh, especially with these Chryslers, uh, right? So front wheel drive Chrysler, you got your oil filter housing here. I usually just, you know, it's one screw, release that, pull this hose off, unhook this. This is your air filter. Just pull this whole thing out. And it's up and out of your way. And then I inspect my filter, air filter. So this air filter is brand new. I just replaced it not too long ago. But it's a good time while you're in here doing your oil change to possibly get a new filter. Just look for dirt, gunk on there. Pretty self-explanatory. And that's important because your air filter, your oil filter too, but your air filter helps with uh, your fuel economy. It's a big one. Uh, the more air that's coming into your intake, just the better things work. So you see yourself starting to lose, you know, uh, I tell a lot of friends, like, it seems like my car is sucking gas. My first question is usually, when's the last time you changed the air filter? Because the air filter, it, It'll, it'll make your car run too rich if it's not, if it's really dirty and clogged and you're not getting enough air through your intake. That's what happens. So keep your air filter clean. On the turbo, uh, the Chevy Sonic, I, I change the air filter and that thing every time I change the oil. Now I don't need to do that on this vehicle, but you know, with a turbo especially, you're taking air and you're basically sucking it in, shoving it into the engine. Um, it's it's important to change your air filter. Number five, don't get sold. Check it yourself. Check your vital fluids and top them off. It's also a good idea, just like the Jiffy Lubes will do. You know, <laughs> don't don't go to Jiffy Lube, by the way. Anyway, but yeah, you go to your dealership. They're gonna check your fluids because they want money out of you. <laughs> It's true, um, but it's also important, right? I'm not, uh, I'm not being a jerk about that. Uh, you put some. Now that I fixed my uh, windshield wiper, wiper uh, is important to keep fluid. Uh, it's important for this to be full. You know, uh, make sure your fluids are are topped off and in good shape. See how see how much easier this is. Just you're just in there. It's like boom. Loosening up just a lot easier once you're in there. Just a little bit of extra work can make a lot less work in the long run. Number six, what about that O ring on your filter housing? The little O ring right here, does that have to be replaced every time, Russ? No, no, it doesn't. I know some mechanics will be mad at me for saying that. But no, it actually doesn't. I would feel it, make sure it's in good shape. I usually do it every other oil change. You don't need to do it every time. It's, it's a pretty good chunk of rubber. All right, it'll be fine. Number seven, sometimes the worst thing you can do is start your car. Here's something for you to tip, and I'm not being paid to say this, <laughs> so. 
I don't know if these guys will, who knows, end up sponsoring a video, but Magnatech, um, the worst thing for your car, especially with these dual overhead cams that are in these vehicles today, uh, the worst thing you can do is start your engine. It's true. Starting your engine, there's everything on top, the oil just kind of seeps to the bottom. It sits in the pan while your car is cold. And when you start the engine, the oil pump comes on. Of course, it pumps the oil. But those few seconds or that fractions of a second, it's metal against metal pretty much. Um, and this is engineered, it's magnetic, like the oil sticks to the metal parts and uh, it, it was patented a long time ago and now I guess the patent was up and GTX Castrol jumped on it so yeah I recommend this oil for that reason because it, it will uh, extend the life of your of your engine uh, because yeah man it's a violent thing starting your motor number eight Stop the glug, glug, glug. Pour your oil and your antifreeze like this, and all the air stays level, and you don't get bubbles. You know the gur 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 gur. You know, trying to pour in there and it gets all over the place because it's gargling. If you hold it sideways, that doesn't happen. Look at that. There's dumping in there without a gurgle at all. This is a whole US gallon. Number nine, burp your baby. <laughs> After putting the five quarts in, especially with these high captivity engines, um, five quarts in, I'll start it and give it a few seconds and turn it off. And what that does is that pulls all the oil that's in the bottom up into the engine and it just lets everything circulate and burp better. <laughs> it just fills the engine with oil in a way that's uh, it's not going to clog anything up too badly in the long run it's best to do that get everything circulating then put your last quart in now if you have a four-cylinder engine I wouldn't worry about it um, you know V8s and some of these big six cylinders it can be helpful number 10 reset oil change do and there's a lot of videos on that didn't mention that but you can do it yourself all right, YouTube, so the next thing to do is, now that we got the oil changed, sit in here, turn the accessory on, hit the gas pedal three times, and that's all you do. Sometimes there's a ding, sometimes there's not. Anyway, that resets it so you don't get that annoying oil change do coming up. I also made a video on that. It's right up there. <laughs> and some other videos uh, that I've done on oil change stuff. By the way, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I know, I'm going to remind you of that because it's important <laughs> to, what, to what us YouTubers do over here. And the bell icon is a thing. I know. Do you really want to be annoyed every time Russ uh, sends a video? Is it like LinkedIn where you, <laughs> where you get some annoying LinkedIn notification? That's got to be the worst, right? LinkedIn notifications. No, this is better than that. This is, uh, you just get a reminder when I, when I upload a video. You can hit the bell icon or not hit the bell icon. It seems to be the trendy thing to do on YouTube, so maybe be punk and don't. Don't hit the bell icon. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the chicken head to subscribe, and later, bye.